afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Saturday, May 7th, 2022, a little after 3 p.m. Eastern. Whomever you've assigned the role, think about this. Whoever you have assigned the role of upsetting you the most today is your greatest teacher. Without them, you would never see the illusion of your ego and realize how to free yourself from it. Everything is deeply eternal loving in disguise. Well, you'd never think that, would you? Someone upsets you, you don't, you don't say, wow, I really am grateful for them showing me that or teaching me that. We have a tendency to sink into the lower vibrational frequencies when that takes place. Now, this civilization has the ability, it isn't fully discovered. Love is the great miracle cure. Loving ourselves works miracles in our lives. Louise Hay. Now, some of you probably know that it's been known for many years in the alternative healing community that we have the power to heal our bodies with our minds. <clears throat> Excuse me. Many studies have been done where people, where people were healed from the threatening illnesses such as fourth stage cancer by changing their thinking and healing patterns, doing laughter therapy and learning from their illness and listening to it as a great spiritual teacher. This great journey we are all on through this life is one that always ends with what? Death. Yet we do have the power to release and heal our illness instead of letting it destroy our bodies. This amazing healing power we all share begins with the path of learning how to love every, and I emphasize every every single aspect of ourselves in the most intimate and vulnerable way most of us have a very very challenging time to even come close to that the vibration of love it has been scientifically proven to alter the shape and structure of physical molecules as we know such as water According to current scientific studies, water molecules are directly affected by the words, sounds, and thoughts they are exposed to. Now, since your physical body is made up of more than 70% water, it is continuously impacted by the vibrations of negative or positive words you send to it. The alternate healing community accepts that the vibration of love will literally create a physical healing in your body that's been proven it may take three days to six weeks to six months several years for the change to happen all depending on your willingness to let go of control and resistance to love and allow in all the light loving healing feelings you can give to yourself the more you love you the healthier you will be and the more energy you will instantly feel. You will know you are healing as you will naturally feel more energized, alive, and happier as you continue to bathe yourselves in the healing energy of self-love. Don't allow your belief to be suppressed by the intellect's demand for proof. Don't wait for proof. Believe, and then allow the truth to manifest. Emmanuel, don't allow your belief to be suppressed by the intellect's demand for proof. Don't wait for proof. Believe, and then allow the truth to manifest. When you look at the human being in all of its amazing dimension and form, you see that the physical body is simply the initial layer of what we truly are. At the core, we are spiritual beings overflowing with consciousness and light energy. We are the infinite energy and great force that runs through all things. 
This is surprisingly accurate to what they described in the Star Wars movies. The use of the Force and may the Force be with you. When we discover our connection with the, uh, this awesome force, which behaves much like a spider web matrix of conscious energy that connects everything in this universe, we find our access point and can tap into its an eternal healing spring of inner peace, physical rejuvenation, and a truly fulfilling life. Now, the challenge is that the majority of us have not gone within. We ignore the fact that we are the God within. We fear that discovery. So, therefore, we never get to square one on discovering the power that we are of healing these bodies. We have issues with ourselves. We don't like ourselves. We're angry with ourselves. We ridicule ourselves. We can't accept any kind of compliments to ourselves because we don't love ourselves. When you look deep enough at the nature of healing, and isn't shouldn't that isn't that for all of us paramount? See, we've as a civilization, we've never really had the chance because we've been so distracted and so controlled to believe that we can't heal ourselves, to believe that we are not all-powerful, omnipotently powerful. We believe always the opposite. When you look deep enough at the nature of health, and the main cause of it. You can see exactly how our bodies are shaped by the mind's beliefs, perceptions, judgments, and interpretations of reality. Our breath is the main conduit of life energy which enters us and is how we greet, meet, and merge with this entire universe. We are living a, a life full of stress, full of worry and fear. We are barely breathing. And that's pretty much factual. Most of us barely breathe. We are clinging to the mind, gripping on to the boy, not trusting life, and not taking the risk to fully participate in the totality of this awesome creation if or when we consciously practice an awareness of our breath over just a few days we will start to notice how we are holding our breath when we are doing it and learn to let it go through this simple practice of watching our breath we become so conscious of what's occurring inside that we cannot slow or allow in the life deteriorating and energetic depreciating experiences of stress, anxiety, and tension. Through the simple practice of watching our breath, we become so conscious of what's occurring inside, we cannot allow in the life deteriorating and energetic depreciating experience of stress, anxiety, and tension. Eventually, with enough tension and stress, our body reaches an intensity breakdown point and becomes diseased. It stops being at ease feeling connected to the loving force and matrix of all life energy that is constantly moving through everything. If we want perfect health, it's vital that we learn how to connect with our breath. This is the first gateway to healing and finding that natural flowing connection with nature and with the five elements, air, 
fire, <clears throat> water, earth, spirit. We'll add ether around us. If you are already fighting an illness of any kind, mental, emotional, or physical, and are sincere, and I emphasize the word sincere, about finding out how to heal yourself from it, you will most definitely need to take a long, deep look inside yourself at how much love you have for you. In order to open up this connection to true radical healing, the first step is to find the deepest possible love you can remember having for yourself in your life. Look at any experience you can find where nothing else mattered except for the love you had for you. The sensation of pure devotion and love that you have for you is the essential foundation you'll need to fully heal yourself. When you reach deep enough inside and find the feeling of this pure, sweet, devoted love for yourself, you can direct that love into any part of your body and begin to change the energy of that area. Using your breath, pull the energy from the natural air around you. Remember, one cubic meter of space has enough energy to boil all the oceans in this planet. So using your breath, pull the energy from the natural air around you, feel into these five elements that you are connected with. Use this connection to summon a natural healing sensation to enter every cell of your body. Now, if you don't like yourself, and you don't face yourself, and you don't surrender to the love that you are, this will not be possible. It is about going within and staying within. It is about discovering all the parts of yourself that you don't like or maybe hate. And forgiving yourself and embracing yourself and begin to love yourself deeply. Or this is not possible when I'm sharing with you. It won't be possible. And this is a miracle. The moment that you realize that there is no way to make a home, then this whole existence is home. Then wherever you are, you are at home. Of course, in miracles. And this is a miracle. The moment that you realize that there is no way to make a home, then this whole existence is home. Then wherever you are, you are at home. The life we are living is a physical and also a metaphysical, which means beyond physical, is a physical, also metaphysical, meta meaning beyond physical, ride we are all on. We need to just understand how simple it is to manifest the things we desire if we are to truly enjoy our lives completely. It's important to understand that thoughts contain a powerful energy within them. And when accompanied with positive belief and emotion, they have the magical ability to heal. It works very similarly to how we would tune a radio station to our favorite station. When you change your mental and emotional channel to a healing frequency, you feel like you could start dancing on the inside. The highest broadcast we can listen to is one of lightness, joy, freedom, love, unity, authenticity, and vulnerability. It is not the station that makes you feel fear, control, 
resistance, defensiveness, being right, or demanding things are a certain way. When you step into the radio tower in your brain and choose only to play the higher thoughts found on these higher, lighter stations, you begin broadcasting healing feelings throughout the body and can start feeling real energy shifting results within a matter of hours. On your inner exploration of healing, take a few minutes to meditate on the intention that you are going to heal your life in a certain amount of time. Feel into exactly what that amount of time is for you. Is it one week, three months, or six months? It must not feel too short or too long, yet just enough time that creates an excitement and a relaxation in the body and the mind. When you hold this intention, when you hold this intention sacred every day, you activate this energetic healing magnetic response within the DNA of your body. These highly intelligent cells start programming themselves to heal on the new time schedule. From this space, you start attracting positive situations, people, foods, supplements, or environments that create an even stronger healing response on your system. When enough healing momentum in the thought patterns or form, you will manifest a positive energetic shift that takes effect on your physical form. As your body's cells change, you might experience a deep release of unpleasant emotions such as shame, guilt, anger, fear, and even false pride. We are psycho-emotional organisms, meaning that our emotional, mental, and physical bodies are deeply intertwined. When one aspect is transformed, it impacts the others instantaneously as well. This means to remain in a healed body, we must choose to give up listening to the station that contain those harmful emotional experiences. The old habits we must release are criticizing ourselves, blaming ourselves, judging ourselves, feeling guilty, ashamed, withdrawing from our loved ones, hiding our light from the world, punishing ourselves, attacking ourselves, and resisting love. When these harmful behaviors are outweighed by the positive feelings about ourselves, we naturally maintain a whole healed state. It is only when a substantial level of relaxation is experienced around these harmful emotions that we create a space within an abundance of positive feelings can suddenly come pouring in. The key ingredient in healing is always self-love. This is not a hard thing to do. It is simply a matter of looking at what is lovable about you. It's about honoring your true self and stop believing in the negative false self that brought you into a state of dis-ease. The false self is the limited one who struggles with the mind, fights with everything, always has to be right, pushes itself too hard, works too little or too much, and doesn't believe it is always lovable. It simply doesn't feel lovable, worthy of love, or that it has a kind of love others would want to receive. 
It simply doesn't believe in love at all and is protecting itself from getting hurt again, choosing to remain defended and in control at all costs. When we give up on this false way of being, we give ourselves space to discover our true self, which is directly tuned into our spiritual essence. In this liberated space, we feel connected and know we have access to states of deeply eternal loving acceptance of who we are. We abide in openness, love, joy, peacefulness, curiosity, compassion, and easily have reverence for ourselves just the way we are. From this place, it is easy to forgive ourselves, be kind to ourselves, love every aspect of ourselves, and have compassion for the state we were once in. It is from repeating the feeling of having this warm, open-hearted, cozy sensation that you will turn yourself into a healing magnet and manifest a dis-ease free body throughout our lives. Eventually, you will come to understand that love heals everything, and love is all there is. Gary Zuka. If or when you have trouble loving you or finding someone out there who loves you, think about someone or anyone from your past who gave you an experience of being accepted or lovable. Perhaps it was a smile from your grandma or a neighbor brought your family cookies one day. Any loving event is enough to open the door to finding that feeling of love within yourself. And it is this feeling that can begin healing your entire life. When you harness memories that build positive energy in your emotional body, your mind tends to gather a string of similar events in your database by writing down all the memories you gather a string of similar events in your database by writing down all the memories you gather a string of similar events in your database by writing down all the memories you have of receiving or giving love accepting gifts from others and trusting yourself and others. You increase your vibration and feel more at ease. Disease cannot energetically stay in a body that is filled with joy and ease. So if you will, go to a place where you're not going to be interrupted. And I'm sure that we all are. And the very first thing that we do with these bodies that we are in is relax them. You relax the body through the breath. You focus on your breath. You take easy and slow inhales through the nose. You take easy and slow exhales from the mouth. As you do this, the body begins to unfold. Its wrinkles disappear. Stress, anxiety, tension, fear, anger, deception, worry, all of these things fall away. You look at your body like, at first it's clear, right? And then as time goes by, it is like an electromagnetic sponge. It, it's like all these stickers start appearing all over the body, inside and out. All these stickers. And the stickers are from what? They're generated from the ego mind, not from the heart mind. Certain events in your life where you experience massive emotional upheaval, fear, even hatred and anger, 
at yourself. And all this time that's been accumulating, because the majority of us fear loving ourselves. We fear it. So we deny that love for ourselves, to ourselves, with ourselves. Why do you think there is so much disillusionment with this planet and its civilization? That's why. The majority of people do not deeply, eternally love themselves. And they ignore the fact that the love is what they are deep in the core of these bodies. Isn't that ironic? The very love that each of us are, we deny to ourselves. And many of us will do this our entire lives. And then we leave the body and we go, shoot. Darn it. That's why when you focus on your breath, move into the now. You understand that all of the tension, all the stress, all the fear, all the worries leaves. It has no glue anymore. The stickum is gone. It falls away. And you're more able to embrace yourself, love yourself. And I'm not saying that it's easy for some, because it isn't. Because they've habitualized themselves, and habituated themselves, into the fact that they don't love themselves. They don't, when they look at themselves, they don't see love. They see, see anger, discontentment, fear, worry, stress, anxiety about themselves. This is the main reason why everybody on this planet has the propensity to bring in this ease. So as you focus on your breath, and you remember that body you're in, because you're not the body, you're not the name, you're not the personality, you're not the character, you're not the status in your life, in this life, you're the God, the kingdom of God. You are the holy light, the pure, deep, eternal love light energy within that body. So as the breath continues, as you focus on the breath, you still the ego mind. You still the subconscious mind. You leave them alone. You don't participate in it. You don't participate in all those thoughts that the ego mind throws at you. You look at them and you say, not interested. Pass on by. Not interested. Flow through me. And you say it with love. You say it with compassion. Not anger. Not not aggressive anger. Not just just distrust. Worry. You just let it go. And you'll find that the body that you're in begins to let go. You may cry for an hour, two hours, all day. You don't know. Because all this pent up locked up information, experience, emotions that you are carrying with you. And you ask yourself, why in the heck am I carrying all of this fear, sorrow, anguish towards myself? Does it serve me the greater good? No. It doesn't serve me the greater good. So let it go. This is the main interference on this planet for all of us. The first step is to still the ego mind through the breath. 
and practice this as much as you choose, as often, go within. Seek the God that you are. All this other stuff that we accumulate through our lives, and we all accumulate, so many of us are afraid of ourselves. We fear the love that we are. Isn't that amazing? It isn't a bad thing. It's just acknowledging it and tending to it. Loving oneself is the power. Deeply, eternally loving oneself is the power. It's the power of the love that you're made of and from. Releasing all this pain that you carry with you throughout this life. Many of us haven't even begun to love ourselves. And you hear me say this a lot. It's all about you. It's about you discovering who and what you are. It isn't about anybody else. It isn't about what other people think of you, circumstances, situations. It's all about you, the God that you are in that body, the pure, deep, eternal love that you are. When you're able, and you choose, of course, because no one's going to force you to do that, you must choose to do so, not sporadically, But once you choose, it's forever. Now imagine what would happen on this planet were all of us to do this, to go within. Were all of the baggage, the so-called baggage we collect through our lives, all the things were like sponges, these bodies. And they absorb everything, every emotion, every turmoil, every letdown, every heartbreak, every heartache, everything. We absorb them. Not only that, since we haven't discovered who and what we are, we carry them. Not only this lifetime, but many past lifetimes. There was a story, something that you can identify with. There was a young man, 30 years old. He was approaching his 30th birthday. He drove over this bridge. It was one of those old historic covered bridges. And he drove over it to go to work every day. Now, as something started happening, he started feeling apprehensive as he approached the bridge to go to work. Didn't understand why but he started becoming fearful. And this kept growing as his birthday approached. It got worse and worse to the point where he he got sick to his stomach every time he crossed that bridge. Come to find out in his past life, he ran off of that bridge and drowned in the water. This is what happens to a lot of us. We carry our emotional baggage with us through many lifetimes. This is why it's so imperative for us to love ourselves deeply, eternally, infinity and beyond. All the aspects of you, every avenue of you, forgive, embrace, let go, it's up to you. But believe you me, when you do this, the first thing you'll experience is a massive release. And it won't be temporary. It will be permanent. Because you'll begin to discover, why the heck have I been carrying all this stuff for so long? No wonder I have a difficult time enjoying my life. No wonder I'm so angry with myself. Look at all this stuff I've collected. And it isn't a bad thing. We all do it. None of us are exempt from it. 
it's facing that. Have you ever come across anyone, okay, that seems free acting, lighthearted, never seems to get real upset, irritated? You ever met people like that? They've discovered partially of who and what they are, and they have forgiven themselves for how they have treated themselves for so many years in this life. That's what happens. Have you ever met people that really don't care what other people think of them? It's not a joke. They're not putting it on. It's not ego. It's just they just don't care. It's not, it's not an interest to them, how people think about them, what they feel about them, or anything. This, this, is, this is our true freedom. This is our path to freedom. It's discovering ourselves. And none of us, none of us are exempt from carrying baggage and carrying emotional upheaval, and and you can feel it. See, when you start to open up to yourself, you begin to feel it. You understand it. Nobody's nobody's going to understand it for you. You will understand it for you. That's all that matters. And as this, this is part of the journey within. Loving yourself deeply, purely, eternally, infinity and beyond, is crucial. Some of us will take several thousand lifetimes, but eventually we'll get it. There's no race here. No one's better than anybody else. We all deserve the best of everything. And we do. Say that to yourself. Say that you deserve the best of everything. And everyone else does too. See, some people make that statement. They've told me they feel guilty by making that statement. Why in the heck would you feel guilty? You're a God. You're divine perfection. Doesn't it make sense that everything that you desire should come to you? No matter what it is, you'll laugh more. You'll be much more lighthearted. You'll feel more. You'll feel more you. You won't fight yourself. You won't hassle and wrestle with yourself. You won't grapple with yourself. This is why I always say it's imperative to practice. Gentleness, kindness, generosity, and humbleness with yourself. How many of us beat ourselves up and we, we're so used to doing it, we just don't, we don't take it clearly. We just run over it. How we beat ourselves up and yell at ourselves and get angry with ourselves. and It's very, very, very low frequency. to be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times, and to stay into the deepest of the deepest, deepest, purest of the purest, purest, highest of the highest, highest, eternal love. This is what, it is isn't an ironic on this planet. Love is the highest power that there is. Nothing comes close to it. Pure, unmitigated, unfaltered love. And that's what each of us are in these bodies. We always have been this. We always will be. Ever, beyond, and forever. Why is it that we, mankind, humanity, run from ourselves? We run from ourselves. We spend most of our lives running from ourselves. And all along, it's to choose to love ourselves that frees us from all of these lower vibrational frequencies. We free ourselves. Only you can do that. Nobody else. No books. No gurus. Just you. It's like you have, picture this. Everyone visualize this. You're focused on your breath. You have left the ego mind and subconscious mind alone. You feel free. Light. Your body is relaxed. You, you aren't 
being con con um, confronted by the ego mind's thought generating machine. Uh, you're not worrying, stressing, or fearing. You find yourself in in a total peace, a a, a flooding, washing, permeating, loving peace that comes through you, over you, with you, floods you. And you don't have the the the, the mind chatter that we all have 24-7. That's gone. And you don't have all of these thoughts rushing and running, these 60,000 plus thoughts going out every day. You don't have these tens of millions of programs running by you every day like clouds in the sky. They're not there when you're in the now. None of it. You don't have distractions. And you, ha and you look at this door. You're standing in front of it. And it, it, it's a door, but it's not like the door you would think. It's like all of these flames, these different colors. And the door handle is a golden color. And the only way you can open that door is not with your hand. It is with your heart. It's the only way that door is going to open, through the heart mind. And you choose to do that through the heart mind, and the door disappears, it vanishes. You walk in, and there before you is absolute divine perfection, pure, deep, eternal love. And right in front of you, it is you. You discover who and what you are. The light is so bright of the God and the love that you are, those in the lower dark matter survival matter frequencies would not only be blinded they would be disintegrated in your presence in your presence we talk about like attracts like right we talk about how we attract things we all do whether we're, we acknowledge it or not usually a lot of us will say well that's coincidence that's how we brush it off Oh, that's silly. That's just coincidence. Others, few, will identify that. I am that I am, which means that everything that you generate is drawn to you. So hatred for yourself begets hatred for yourself. Disrespect for yourself begets disrespect for yourself. It is a spiral effect. It draws us lower and lower and lower. And we get more and more frustrated, more and more angry, more and more upset, more and more in a hurry. All these things. But a lot of the times we just don't know it. We get so caught up in these lower dark matter frequencies throughout this life. And otherwise, that we live it with ourselves. We live it. And the, the, the more that we are disloved, the more of this lower frequency sticks to us. Where are all the problems on this planet? I'm explaining why. It isn't about out there. It isn't about the dark ones running and ruling and destroying and everything. All of us are omnipotently powerful gods within these bodies. Seriously. When we focus on something, like if there's a bad storm, you focus on it through the heart mind with deep, pure, eternal love. And you visualize the structure of this storm. And you say, I don't care to have anybody harmed by the force of this storm. And you redirect it. A lot of storms have been artificially created on this planet that would have wiped out seaboards 
for years that never, ever hit land. This civilization has not really realized what it is, what it's about, who it is. So when the understanding of pure, deep, eternal love comes into you, for you, not to you, and you start to embrace the God that you are in that room, through that door, permanently. So that God embraces you. And that warm, just absolute, beautiful, wonderful embrace stays, doesn't go away, it lasts through eternity. You ever been embraced with a warm, warm embrace? And it feels so comforting, so loving, so caring, that you have tears of joy by receiving it. Most of us are afraid to hug strangers. Most of us are afraid to hug ourselves. Think about that. And then we wonder why so much turmoil is on this planet. This is why we're here to experience these things. None of them are bad. They're experiences. They're for us to discover. And if you don't discover it in this lifetime, maybe the next, or the next, or the next, or the next. So I want everybody to picture that you're in that room, that you entered that door, and you're being embraced by the God that you are. And just lay there and invite that God force, love light energy in you, through you, of you, for you. This is a golden pink white light. It's like, have you ever gotten the chills? you ever gotten really cold? And then you feel the warmth? It's like that. And the body just lets go. And it releases. And it's totally relaxed. You feel like you're floating. And the God that you are, the pure, deep, eternal love that you are in that body, is front and center. And all the pain, all the sorrow that you have attracted to yourself, that you have not forgiven yourself for, is released. You can go anywhere, do anything that you choose. But this is what we are. Pure, deep, eternal love. A light so bright that it grays out the darkness of sacred space. A light so bright that you can have a trillion suns all gathered and they would pale in comparison to the light that you are. We all are. Nothing can put this light out. It is immortal. It is infinity and beyond. And think about that. We have the power. Once we face our fears, once we face all of these things we've been carrying with us, once we stop harming ourselves, destroying ourselves, hatred, anger, frustration, disappointment, and let that go permanently, and if it, sh if it sh tries to show its ugly face again, embrace it, love it, and it'll just vanish right before you. It'll vanish. We talk about in these guided, so these guided meditation calls of all the ascended masters. You were an ascended master. Right? We talk about the archangels, the cherubim, the cherubim, and everything. You are an angel. We talk about light energy beings. You are light energy beings. You, you're everything. This is the journey within. It's not the journey outside. We've all done that many lifetimes. We've been there, as you say, 
We've been there, done that. Don't care to go back to that. We are not in a race. Each of us chooses to go within in our own time. Some of us will say, I'm not ready to do that. 10,000 lifetimes later, maybe you will be. It just depends. You could decide to do that within the next split second. Not out of fear, not out of hatred, anger, or frustration, but out of deep, pure, eternal love. You're a Buddha. You're God. You're the kingdom of God within that body. You're creator. Don't you, don't you believe, don't you finally realize that we've spent enough time, the gods that we are, and the lower frequencies to discover what they're about and you know, to experience them? Haven't we spent enough time? I think that we could all spend maybe a day in that muck and learn enough where we wouldn't care to go in that muck again. But to spend an entire lifetime of carrying all this sludge around that we have a propensity to do, why would we do that? All, is it, all it does is harm oneself. It begins to disintegrate. This is why every one of us, every one of us, has the situation, the drawing, unconsciously to come down with dis-ease. This ease. This is a new discovery for humanity. Many have tried, but they've been drawn back into the material physical world outside themselves. When you deeply love you, deeply love you. You can deeply love anything. Everybody's had the cart be put the cart before the horse. They try to deeply love those outside of themselves. And look what happens in most cases. It ends in pain, sorrow, disruption, destruction, disrespect, lies, all across this planet. It's because we're in a hurry. Why are we in a hurry? I have no idea. That's why when we breathe, slowly, slowly, easily, we breath in. Slowly and easily, we breath out. What about our lives? Doesn't it make sense? Slowly and easily, we breath out in this life. Slowly and easily, we breath in. And by doing that, you pick the things that you wish to breathe in through you. Happiness, which is you. Joy, which is you. Love, which is you. Bliss, which is you. All of these things are you within that body. Buying something for yourself is temporary happiness. Receiving is temporary happiness. We all carry around the most omnipotently powerful essence that's ever been, ever will be, ever beyond and forever. And that is pure, deep, eternal love. All of us. Everything. Because each piece of you is spread throughout existence, connected to all particles with no separation, all deep eternal loving, always deeply eternal giving, freeing, embracing, 
tenderness, kindness, generosity, humbleness, all of these things. That's what you are. It's not something that you need to prove. It's not a contest. It's not winning or losing. It's not failure. It's not success. It is you. Always has been. Always will be. Ever beyond and forever. I'll join you in the meditation. And I'll return to close this out.
take an easy breath slowly in through the nose, easily. And an easy, slow breath out the mouth. Be still. This universe is our playground. We can be whom we ever choose to be. There are no rules on who you can or cannot be. So, who do you want to be today? What thoughts and beliefs do you most want to have that will take you and your life in this new direction? Create an inner map for yourself, a guide that arrives at your ideal future state of mind. Start by exploring what thoughts you like to think about and write them down. What does your favorite teacher or master usually say? What does the God within you usually say? Think about or focus on. What will it feel like for others to be around you when you're in this new state of mind? Randomly ask yourself several times today, what am I thinking? Is this thought creating who I want to become? Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night, the following morning. And we'll return here Sunday, May 8th. 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation home.